about um, yeah about the um, what is a, a piezoelectric actuator in uh, especially a multi-layered piezoceramic uh, actuator. Uh, how you can use it in uh, several engineering uh, products, uh, such like uh, medical uh, technology, automation technology, uh, and um, all things. Then, uh, in the next step, I want to tell you something about the theoretical analysis. Um, the main topics are here, the main inertia, main inertia axis position, the differential equation for banding motions, um, especially the eigenfunctions and Rayleigh functions you need to describe um, the banding motions uh, so you get also knowledge about the displacement functions and the dynamic loads you can uh, that can act on actuator and uh, um, at the end, we have a so-called dynamic admittance matrix that is able to describe the complete uh, kinematics and dynamics of the piezoelectric actuator. Um, so what uh, I want to do is I want to show you a model verification that is realized by measuring um, and calculating the deflection characteristics in the first and second vibration mode. Um, and I want to conclude my presentation then. Now let's start with the introduction. Um, uh, at this picture you can see a, a, a typical multi-layered piezoelectric actuator um, consisting of several layers and on the left side you see there is a, uh, the actuator is clamped and is also um, uh, parallel connected in parallel with uh, the several <clears throat> yellow shown layers. Now, what are the layers? The layers are a nickel steel layer that you need for thermal compensation. Then you have a glass fiber compound that is acting as an intermediate layer between the nickel steel and the so called PCT layers. This uh, um, PCT layers, um, they uh, are interconnected by so-called um, silver palladium electrodes. If you not, um, you see um, the PCT layers uh, have a direction of polarization here, um, denoted with the uh, polarization vector P. If you now um, apply a voltage um, to the um, uh, to the parallel connected PCT layers, you uh, Will um, you will uh, gain an um, electric field? So the electric field is always anti-parallel to the polarization direction within the PCT layers. That is uh, resulting in a contraction along the x-axis here, um, here denoted with blue arrows. And uh, when you have a contraction, you will realize an internal bending moment. This internal bending moment. Um, uh, Results in a tip um, of the actuator in the tip deflection of the actuator and it bends downwards to the set direction. So that is the function of this actuator. And you can imagine if you want to describe the static and the dynamic behavior of such an actuator, um, um, you have to uh, you have to take care of some very important aspects. Um, that you uh, understand the lecture much better, I uh, want to introduce some nomenclature for extensive and intensive parameters. The in extensive parameters, as you can uh, see here on the left picture, I have, um, first of all, the bending moment. That is a moment that can act uh, from the outside to the bender's tip. Also, a uh, force applied to the bender's tip and a pressure load um, is acting over the, uh, over the above layer. And also, you can use um, electric voltage, a driving voltage that can be applied to uh, the um, bending actuator. This is resulting in, um, in the manner of uh, mechanics that in intensive parameters, so-called the bending angle, which is directly connected with the bending moment, uh, the product of both quantities results in a 
in a, a, a mechanical work or a, a stored energy. And then you have also um, the tip deflection C, uh, voltage disp um, uh, volume displacement V, and you have a generated electric charge Q. What is very important that each a pair of uh, intensive and extensive parameters results in um, in a work in a in, in a quantity of work. Um, but you have also interconnections between the extensive parameters and intensive parameters. So that means a force can also re, um, result in a bending angle, can also result in a volume displacement, also result in a um, in a, an electric charge. So what we do. What we need to do is to um, to find out what are the constituent equations um, that can be presented by a dynamic admittance matrix here, four cross four matrix H of X. And you see on the left side, the intensive parameters, bending angle, deflection, volume, and electric charge. And on the left, on the right side, you see this, um, the dynamic uh, quantities, a moment, force, pressure, and voltage. Um, for simplicity, I, uh, I assume that the extensive parameters are sine or uh, cosine uh, behavior. Um, the admittance matrix um, is defined by the individual matrix elements H, I, J of X and uh, what are representing the individual functions of any point X over the entire length of the beam bending actuator, combining the extensive with the intensive parameters. So what's the way to get this? Now let's start with the main national axis position. It's a really simple uh, starting point, but um, I started with an N-layered uh, uh, um, um, uh, approach that means uh, I assume n layers. Each layer has a, a thickness here denoted with H and indexed um, by the layer number. And um, when you when you just have a closer look to this picture, you see the main inertia axis or neutral neutral axis is that axis where no strain or no stress will uh, result after the bending. Now, um, how can we get this um, um, main inertia axis? Now, I don't want to show the way to calculate it, but it's, it's really simple. You have some uh, um, summations um, over the width of the layers, over the height of the layers, or the thickness, and then uh, also a very important quantity um, uh, is defined by uh, uh, quantity S uh, indexed one one uh, comma I that means you have the compliance of each layer so that means if you have uh, several layers uh, it doesn't matter which layers uh, they have different compliances you can also assume different width and different heights um, when we go further on uh, the main inertia axis position will always um, be a, a, a value that will be that can be uh, uh, seen in other calculations. So that is a very important um, mechanical quantity we need. Now let's start um, with the differential equation for bending motions, and um, this is the starting point for the determining of the um, matrix elements H I J of X um, of the metric of the admittance matrix. Now you see here um, uh, a differential equation uh, of fourth order um, depending on uh, the length variable x and depending also on time. And what you see on the left side, on the right side, the, co um, the quantity fx of t is the so-called dynamic load. It means um, it can be a moment, it can be a force, can be a pressure load, it can be also an electrical quantity, just like a electrical voltage. And um, the, the, um, the quantity R indexed A is the friction per unit length. This quantity is very important and has to be determined experimentally in order to, uh, to verify um, the theory. Uh, then you have a mass per unit lens. It can be ca calculated um, out of the um, specific mass of every layer uh, you have within 
your uh, banning actuator. And then a very important quantity is also the flexural rigidity. It's called C at this um, point. And what you see here um, is in this uh, equation, there is also the summation over the layers, uh, the individual layers uh, up from one till N. But you have also this quantity Z bar, that means the neutral axis position that is playing a very important role within this um, within the calculation. So from this point, we can go ahead and uh, define the general solution of the homogeneous um, differential equation. That's first of all, we have to find the homogeneous differential equation. It means fx of t equal, um, uh, equals zero at that moment. You can um, realize that very easily by uh, a so-called ansatz function. This ansatz function is um, realized by uh, uh, um, uh, separation, uh, separate, so-called separation ansatz. And uh, separation ansatz means that you have a quantity x of m, which describes the uh, the deflection, the, 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 the mode, and you have also uh, this um, quantity which is dependent uh, from the time. This is a point along the x-axis um, which you pick out and you just have a look on uh, the time behavior uh, of the movement of the point. Yeah, and uh, in the next step, you can uh, you find the dynamic banding deflection of the actuator, and when you when you uh, go ahead with uh, finding the, um, uh, the the banding deflection uh, xi x of t, you have first of all to find the displacement function. The index m means that you have the m vibration mode here. And also you have the eigenfunction uh, of the mth vibration mode. The eigenfunction is, um, is, uh, is the eigenfunction multiplied with the displacement function realized in the complete um, yeah, dynamic deflection uh, Cx of t. Now, first of all, um, we have to um, define the boundary conditions or of a clamped free beam bender. It's very easy. You see it on the picture here. You have on the left side where, the, where you see the clamp, the deflection C equals zero. That means also that um, the mode XM of zero is always zero for every for every mode. It uh, there is no movement. Also, the banding angle on uh, at deflect uh, at the clamp side is always zero. The banding angle is defined by the the first variation of the uh, uh, of the the the, uh, the mode. When we go to the left side, you um, to the right side, you see. Um, when the moment m acts on the left side, it is combined with the second deviation of um, the bending mode, x, uh, x double dashed m and equals zero, and also the force f that can be applied to the bender's tip. And so you have four conditions, and these four conditions, um, they are used for defining, first of all, a characteristic equation. This characteristic equation uh, is often an equation that can't be solved in an analytical way. It's an equation that is uh, that can be solved um, numerically, and you can get the so-called zeros, and these zeros of this equation stay um, result in the so-called wave number. And this wave number uh, here denoted with uh, the quantity k um, uh, depends on the, the eigenfrequency or resonance frequency omega, omega at the um, flexor rigidity c and the mass per unit length. And um, now you can go back uh, with this knowledge and can define the eigenfunctions um, over a linear combination of sine and cosines, as well as uh, um, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine functions. That means uh, the 
these functions are also called Rayleigh functions and uh, I have written them here in, uh, in this sheet so that you can you can see what I did. You have all uh, um, the subtraction of a cosine hyperbolic and a cosine function. Also, uh, uh, you have an addition, then a subtraction again and an addition, and you gain different values that you can use for uh, writing the complete solutions in a very compact way. It's, it's very important to say that um, each deviation of uh, of each um, um, Rayleigh function results in a new Rayleigh function, just like uh, a sine deviated uh, by x is resulting in a cosine x function. Now, um, with um, the orthogonal uh, orthogonality properties of vibration modes x m of x. They allow for the calculation of the dynamic displacement functions uh, phi of m of t of the inhomogeneous partial differential equations. Just remember, we found the solution for a homogeneous uh, differential equation. And now we want to find uh, the solution for the inhomogeneous partial differential equation. That means we are taking the this quantity f, what means that the external load, we uh, take it into consideration. If we do that, we find a damping term and um, the dynamic load fx of t uh, can be formulated with respect to the direct delta function. It's very easy. You have only to know where your extensive a quantity is, is acting on. It means the bending moment acts at the bander's tip, the force acts at, a, at the uh, bander's tip, and the pressure P is, um, is, is uh, acting over the complete length of uh, the bander surface. And then you have also an, a voltage U that is always acting uh, over the complete length of the piece of T layers. Um, moment, force, pressure, and voltage. So with these quantities, um, I want to introduce a new one. This is uh, called um, a small m uh, index piezo. That means that is the, um, um, the moment uh, referred to the bending moment. The, the, that is the piezoelectric moment refer to the voltage that you apply to the banding actuator. And you see here uh, special quantities that are typical for piezoelectric layers, just like the um, piezoelectric constant D31. You have the width of the layer. You have the compliance of the layer at constant electric field. You have also the height of the layer. You have also, again, your set bar. That means you have your um, main inertia our axis position um, that is uh, playing an important role for the calculation. Um, now, uh, the dynamic admittance matrix, I just want to show you the results. You see here uh, on the left side, I have the intensive parameters, on the right side, the extensive parameters, and the admittance matrix, I just take the first column, uh, H11 till H41. Um, you see here the solutions. It's um, it's, it's a very uh, uh, common way to, to calculate it, but you see here H11 uh, is uh, the connection for the bending angle, for the deflection, then you're also for the volume displacement here for the voltage. And um, if you can do this and repeat that every time, what you see if when you when you apply different ex external loads, you see um, special quantities that are um, that can be calculated. Uh, I call it here alpha indexed m. That means that is standing for the moment that is applied, and it's also um, a, a mixed combination of sine, sine uh, hyperbolic sine functions, and um, that you have to pay into consideration if you want to calculate. The complete dynamic characteristics. Also, uh, the driving force. I don't want to show you the way. I just show you the. Uh, I show you the result. 
you get also an expression what will happen if a force F is applied, what is about the bending angle, what is about the tip deflection, the volume displacement, and also the generated charge Q. Um, you get also, again, uh, a quantity called R, alpha indexed F. Now, let's go ahead with um, the next uh, quantity, harmonic driving pressure. That is a, a very important uh, a quantity we used for uh, calculating the dynamics for microvolves. So, um, it's not only uh, a, a theoretical an analysis, it's a, a real system that is standing behind that uh, um, uh, analytic formulation and also the simulation. Um, yeah, and you see here the driving, for, the driving pressure P and also again the solutions. Um, um, important is to, to see here in uh, the denominator, you see always a special term under the square root that is typical for um, a system that can act in resonance. Yeah, and um, the last but not least quantity is uh, the so-called um, external quantity uh, driving voltage U. What will happen? You see always the quantity M piezo, um, the piezoelectric moment um, referred to the driving voltage uh, plays an important role and also this term here at the uh, the quantity H44, um, the last summation term, um, it uh, it shows that the piezoelectric material, if there is a deformation uh, during the banding, then you have a counter act acting of the piezoelectric effect against it, that external banding moment. Now. Um, all matrix, all matrix elements uh, H, I, J are determined and now let's see experimental verification of a part of the closed form solution. What I choose were deflection characteristics were versus uh, harmonic driving voltage. I will show you the measurement setup. Um, just like in the beginning, you see here a real uh, piezoelectric actor consisting of five piezoelectric um, layers, um, which are um, uh, only uh, 48 microns thick. It's um, a, a very special technique we use to realize these actuators. And they are today used in um, pneumatic wells um, for, for uh, the control and regulation of pressures, maybe in automotive systems and so on. Um, also, we have um, the uh, nickel steel layer um, and a glass fiber compound. And you see the nickel, the, the complete uh, actuator lens is just around about 19 millimeters and the, the width of the, of the actuator um, uh, equals eight um, millimeters. And what you also need uh, for calculation is the compliance of each layer. Uh, we have different compliances. You see nickel steel uh, 6.369 uh, till up till 14.144 um, for the PCT material. And the piezoelectric uh, coefficient, we used a very high efficiency um, piezoelectric material. It means that um, the D31 coefficient is very high in this material. And here you see also that behind this project um, there is a lot of material development, uh, material science also. Um, yeah, and here you see the measurement setup. The measurement setup uh, I will show you first on the left side, we have a linear stage. The linear stage um, can uh, move a laser measurement system here, a triangulator um, along the x-axis, and uh, the triangulator uh, is able to measure the deflection characteristic of an actuator, which is driven um, in a static or is driven in a dynamic mode up till 50 kilohertz. Um, the uh, laser measurement system is able to um, to measure uh, the deflection characteristics with um, at a resolution of uh, 0 0.5 microns. 
that means um, it's a very high resolution and you have got also to take the Shannon theorem into consideration if you do such measurements. Mm. Yeah, you see uh, the measured quantity of flexion characteristics. And uh, on the other side, um, you see the clamp um, for the actuator. And uh, I use the frequency generator, an amplifier stage. And um, because um, this actuator is working um, with uh, uh, special voltages, and so I need an amplifier stage, which is driven by a frequency generator. And um, the thriving voltage equals uh, a special value of uh, offset voltage and also the driving voltage um, amplitude u0 and um, I use here cosine um, omega t. Now let's have a look to the measured and the calculated deflect deflection characteristics here in the vibration mode of the first vibration mode. You see here um, in the first vibration mode at around about 1.1 kilohertz, I have a deflection of around about um, uh, 100 microns um, over the length of, of nearly of nearly 70, mi uh, 70 millimeters. And um, the red one is the measured signal, um, is the measured uh, deflection from the triangulator system. And uh, in black, the line uh, is the calculated uh, mode um, of uh, the dynamic admittance matrix that is uh, um, that is calculated before. And now you can go, you can rise up your uh, frequent, your driving frequency. And if you rise up your driving frequency, you will um, you you will get a, a, you will uh, get a stage where the first vibration mode will disappear, and you have um, an overlay of the first vibration mode, the second vibration mode, but also the other third, fourth, fifth. But they are very very small in amplitude. Um, what the amplitude, um, as far as the amplitude is considered. And you see here we have um, really around um, uh, 10 microns in amplitude at the um, in uh, at 6.59 kilohertz. Um, so for for us in this uh, research project it was very important uh, how is the actuator uh, reacting when there is a pressure um, a, a, a direct delta pressure um, acting on the bandus tip so that the actuator is able to work against this uh, acting pressure and to control uh, the airflow within a microvolve. And that's why it's so important to know the characteristics of the actuator. Mm. Now, let me conclude. I, I know it was very um, a theoretical. Uh, um, a presentation, but I just want to show you it's um, it's always important to first to con uh, to develop um, if it's possible a closed form solution. In this case, for the dynamic admittance matrix H X H of X for any kind of n-layered piezoelectric bending actuator, um, and what we also um, can say is uh, that uh, is the suitability of a part of the dynamic admittance matrix has been shown by determining experimentally the dynamic deflection characteristics of a specially developed piezoelectric multilayer beam bender. And um, yeah, um, the morphology of the entire piezoelectric actuator or generator, if you think about uh, energy harvesting systems in any unlayered material combination can be, can be evaluated properly, solely using geometrical and material parameters. Um, yeah, and at the end, before I show you the last um, sheet, um, um, we used these um, models of, for different kind of uh, piezoelectric actuator uh, design and um, it's working very well.